also known as Morris Carriages, is currently owned by the Chinese giant SAIC or SAIC, and you'll find their emblems all around the car. And I'll tell you why it's a good thing. MG would not exist without SAIC, and they're investing so much money into making this brand a success, and focusing specifically on reliability because it has a Chinese name behind its back. Saic was founded in 1958 and is currently the seventh largest automotive company in the world and the first in China. They also have joint ventures with Volkswagen, Skoda, Chevy, Cadillac and Buick to produce cars for the Chinese market. I mean, the VW ID4X that's flooding our Lebanese roads is produced by Saic. The MG ZS EV is their latest offering and is quickly becoming the more popular option at $35,900. It is powered by a front electric motor making 130 kilowatts or 177 PS and a maximum of 280 Nm of torque. A battery capacity of 50.3 kilowatt hours means it's good for a 307 km of range on a full charge and realistically it takes around 10 hours to charge with a domestic 7 kilowatt charger. According to a reliability survey by Wattcar, they did a test on 32 brands and MG managed to get a ninth position, beating all your favorite Europeans, including BMW, Audi, and Mercedes for good reputation. And that by itself has to mean something. So the paint is called Como Blue, and I honestly love the way it looks. It stands out a lot on the road. It gets a lot of attention. Uh, this car has vehicle to load, which basically means you can plug in any electrical appliance and the car will basically power it for you. You can see it has a different grill compared to the other ZS models. And I honestly think it looks like an Aston Martin grill. You can see the body lines over here on the side. Let me know what you think of that. And this differentiator at the bottom is a nice touch. You do have a radar for the adaptive cruise control. We do have lane assist as well uh, on this car. It's pretty well equipped. We have LED daytime mirror lights as standard, and I love these updated lights that you get on this uh, facelift version of the ZS. 17-inch uh, alloy wheels, they do look nice, but they're plastic, unfortunately, but I mean, uh, I guess it's fine. I'm nitpicking here. Chrome accents all across the car. We have keyless entry, which is nice uh, to have. And then if you come closer towards the back, you have this nice window over here. Uh, it doesn't really help with the blind spot. It's just there to look good. 3D LED daytime mirror lights. I honestly love the way these uh, look. And again, the rear end is a pretty simple rear end. You can open up the trunk by simply pressing on that MG logo and you have a decent amount of space uh, in the back. And then down below you have, you know, a space to put your charging cables or whatever. We have run flat tires, so no spare tire. And then these black accents do look nice. Obviously no exhaust tips on this EV, but I mean, let me know what you think of the design of the MG ZS EV. So sitting inside the MG ZS EV, I'll have to say I really like the layout that you get inside this car. Pretty simple, and I love how they made use of this space. You have a center screen, it's kind of floating from the top, which is a big thumbs up. And then the driver display is pretty clear. A lot of information displayed uh, on that screen. And then a dial uh, over here to scroll between uh, your gears. Basically, just pop it into drive and you're ready to go. While this phone charging is a nice touch and I really like this cup holder that you get over here. It's pretty wide. Jumping into the back seat, let's just check out uh, how much we can fit. Again, for a reminder, I'm 186 centimeters. And then you can see me sitting behind myself, decent amount of legroom, it's pretty good. And then headroom is also pretty good as well because of the panoramic sunroof, we do get a lot of uh, headroom inside here. Two cup holders, which is always nice to have and the leather wrapped armrest. Again, this carbon trim, which is always uh, funny to see inside this car. We do have two air vents, as you can see over here with a USB-A and then USB-C for charging. You'll be happy to know that the ZS EV comes with a bunch of safety and assistance features as standard. It's equipped with six airbags, auto hold, ESP, hill descent control, and emergency braking assist, and also features high beam control, front collision and lane departure warning, and lane keep assistance, which steers you back into your lane. I found the system to be pretty accurate, despite the faded lines on our Lebanese roads. Together with the adaptive cruise control system, the ZS EV offers somewhat of an autonomous, hands-free drive in traffic situations. And so an MCR review would not be complete unless we nitpick here and there. One thing I have to start off by mentioning is the cruise control dial uh, or the stock is literally behind the steering wheel in a way that you cannot see it uh, on the uh, left spoke of the steering wheel. Controlling cruise control is a bit tricky um, in this car. And I also have to mention that the seats aren't the most comfortable uh, seats I've ever been on, especially towards the lower back, even though they're leather. And I love this fake carbon fiber that they managed to do on the seat. We even have it on the dash over here. So, I mean, it does look cool, uh, not gonna lie. And I like the fact that they put leather and not some cheap plastic. So yeah, quality inside here uh, is pretty good. The infotainment system works 
works very well. It's a 10.7 inch screen, very good quality. And I love using Apple CarPlay on it. It's actually wired, so it's not wireless. You do get Android Auto as well inside this car. Now the climate control system is a bit uh, tricky. And what's funny is that you do have heated seats inside this car, but you only have one level uh, and it's pretty hot. So I was slightly cold. So pressing the heated seats will literally burn your off uh, and you cannot, you know, just decrease the temperature so you have to keep that in mind you only use the heated seats if it's snowing outside and it's minus 10 degrees otherwise uh, you'll be cooking your ass off and this gear knob over here going into reverse neutral and drive is very high quality i love this polished material uh, that they use we're getting thumbs up for the uh, mg i mean it's an electric vehicle you can directly notice that with the grill uh, at the front most importantly we have two cup holders with my coffee i mean Three elephants do make some really good coffee. This is my first time trying it. I do recommend them if you're passing through uh, Ghazir. All right, so just for the fun of it, let's do a launch control in reverse because it sounds pretty funny when you accelerate backwards. Three, two, one. We just whiz backwards. I mean, <laughs> that's really nice. So then, how well does it drive? Honestly, it's beautiful, very smooth, uh, and having no engine or gearbox makes for little room for error uh, because I've driven MG vehicles before and I found the gearbox to be a bit mm, sluggish uh, or jerky. But I mean, in this, they just got rid of everything and you just have a battery powering the electric motor at the front wheels and power delivery is really, really smooth and it's quick when you need it, especially when you pop it into sport. It feels more energetic, even though I like to keep it in eco, you know, to keep uh, the range uh, at its maximum capability. Uh, but I mean, it's nimble when you want it and it's honestly much cheaper to run compared to any ZS model. And so the question raises itself here. Why would you consider anything other than the ZS EV for that matter? You see, my two day drive was a bit busy as I managed to travel just about 100 kilometers and still having a 39% battery or 135 kilometers of range. So if you do some quick math, the displayed 170 kilometers of range was effectively 100 kilometers of rear wheel driving. This makes sense if you consider our steep Lebanese roads. Hence, if you live in the mountains, you have to expect a 20% decrease in range compared to the claimed figure, which is to be expected to be honest. The driving experience is as pleasant as it gets and it's an overall great car to live with. Your concern, however, should be about providing enough energy to charge this thing. It'll definitely be enough for three days of driving and you'll ideally plug it at home just like you recharge your cell phone while keeping the battery between 20 and 80%. Make sure you're providing 32 amps or 7 kilowatts of power to charge it overnight. If you've got your electricity sorted, the switch to an EV will change your life and you'll come to appreciate the fact you won't visit a gas station ever again. And with the warranty package that comes with the ZS EV, you don't have to worry about a single thing.